Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Redemption Online and I'm bringing you another cosplay or outfit guide or whatever you want to call it. Today it is a Johnny Reb, so a Confederate infantry soldier. That's what we're going for today, so we're going to start off, as always, with weapons. Okay, and so the first thing we need is the sidearm, and a very, very common sidearm in the Civil War would be something that would look very similar to this. Basically, it would be a percussion revolver. Uh, contrary to popular belief, there was a lot of variation in weapons used in the Civil War, and it really can't be just nailed down to one. But this is very typical of something that you would see. Now, obviously, the charge handle would actually most likely match the color of the barrel, so if we were going for factory finish, real accuracy, the charging handle there, or the, uh, I'm pretty sure that handle is used in real life just for tamping down, because these are black powders so you actually load each shot individually and then you use that to press the ball into place. So these are actually black powder revolvers. So with these ones, that handle would match the color of the barrel. And for a factory revolver like this, basically what your closest thing to standard issue would be is you would have black steel for the barrel, cylinder, hammer, and trigger, and then brass for the frame and the trigger guard. And that would be matched with a plain walnut or cherry looking handle for it. So this is a pretty good representation of what would be most commonly found as a sidearm in the Civil War, especially in the South. So if you want to go for that, this is the design and sidearm to go with. All right, and the next thing we're going to want to do is make your primary weapon. So the sidearm is the Navy revolver, and so the primary weapon I chose for this is the Springfield. And now this isn't totally accurate because the Springfield rifle in here is based off the real-life Springfield model 1873 rifle, which wouldn't be adopted by the U.S. Army until well after the Civil War. That being said, breech-loading rifles did exist during the Civil War and were definitely used. They weren't the most common. The most common firearm by all, uh, by far used in the Civil War on both sides was basically three different models of muzzle-loading weapons. But since we don't have any muzzle-loading weapons in this game, I'm going to stick with this one because it feels the most authentic. Now that being said, there were various carbines, uh, repeaters. The Litchfield in this game is based off a Henry repeating rifle, and there were Henry repeating rifles in the Civil War used on both sides. Obviously, as private weapons, these were not supplied in en masse by any sort of government body. It would have been what an officer or a more wealthy enlisted person would bring in on their own or purchase afterwards. Uh, it wouldn't be standard issue. This, however, feels right because it is a single shot weapon and you do have to reload after every shot. So if I'm going for that, I'm trying to get as close to what the common soldier would use. We don't have a muzzle loader. The best thing that we can come as a close second is a single shot breech loader. So that's why I go with the Springfield. And on that, we just have a plain, uh, standard looking woodstock really the color varied a lot so you could choose almost any one as long as it's not too exotic looking and then all of the metal being black steel because that's how most of these were uh, would come out of the factory looking is all black steel so if the civil war rebel infantry soldiers what you're going for then these two guns are the way to go let's check out the outfit so here it is and now keep in mind before we start diving into the parts which i will show you individually at this time in the civil war especially on the south side there was wide variation in what any any uniform could look like. Basically, it could be very different regiment to regiment. There were uniforms that were basically all red. You had ones that were, they had bright yellow jackets, a lot of ones using gray or tan or brown. There were regiments that had green uniforms. They were all over the place, okay? So the picture we have of all the Union troops wearing blue and all the Union and all the Confederate troops wearing gray is just not accurate. But that being said, again, like I said, I wanted to go for a real stereotypical standardized what you would expect if you were trying to put something like this together. So that's how I designed this. So if you if there's anything you want to change, and uh, one of the areas where there was the most variation was hats, because that would come down to how strict the personal commander was. You'd have regiments from places like Texas where almost all of them would be wearing Stetsons or, or other types of wide brim quote unquote cowboy hats. So really you can go with a lot of different variation but this I think looks the best for a real typical rank and file Confederate soldier. So let's just go through it piece by piece. So for the hat, I obviously stuck with the gray Union uh, cap. And now again, like I said, really most of the colors could be used uh, for the Union cap because you would see that much variation on a rebel soldier. Uh, many of these soldiers would be leaving the Union army and so there were quite a few rebels with blue hats because that was the standard issue for them. Uh, the reason why we see gray most commonly is because the Confederate leaders felt that they needed enough variation from the enemy troops to prevent confusion on the battlefield, which made 
makes sense. So they went with a very durable and very easy and cheap to produce color, which is where they got gray. And knowing that visibility-wise, it would be very easy to distinguish between the gray and the navy or royal blue of the Union troops. So that's, that's why we're sticking with gray for this uniform. So yeah, the Union cap, this one does actually require gold, though. So you will have to spend a bar or two of gold on this cap. But that's the hat. Just for fun, I decided to add a Rafferty eye patch because I really like the way that this eye patch looks. It's one of the only ones in the game that isn't, like, ridiculous. It doesn't have any, like, bejeweled eyeballs or anything on it. And I feel like it really sells the point across that there were a lot of injuries in the Civil War and eyes were very common to lose because people, you know get shot, hit with shrapnel, fall down and stab a piece of stick through their eye, all sorts of stuff. So you could uh, you could definitely lose an eye, and I really like the eye patch for this uniform. I think it fits really well. So I went with the Rafferty eye patch. Now, I added a neckerchief to this. It's not something that is was ever standard issue in the military, but a lot of people used them just because they had a lot of widespread uses. You could use them for filtering any debris or dust or smoke, which was very common on the battlefield using all these black powder weapons. These would be very, very useful for stuff like that, or just for sweat absorption absorption, have it giving something to wipe your face and your hands and all that sort of stuff off once you get sweaty, which would be very common while fighting down south. So that's why I decided to add a neckerchief. And now I went with the yellow just because I like the way the yellow looks with the gray. If you wanted to be more accurate, historically speaking, the most common colors you would see would be red, white, or blue, just because red and blue are two of the most durable colors, which is why a lot of clothing was made in red or blue back then. And white was very common because it's an undyed linen that way, or off-white, I should say it'd be more of a base beige, eggshell maybe, something like that. But I went with yellow to fit the theme, so that's the neckerchief that I added. So for the coats, I decided to go with the gray military jacket. I just think it looks real good, it definitely fits the uniform style, and while researching for this video, I found a lot of different uniforms, and a lot of them, especially down south, were using jackets that look like this, coats that look like this. I think they called them a blouse. Uh, now obviously, if you're wearing this, the idea would be to have it buttoned, but that's not an option in this game for some reason. But I think it still works really well, because I feel like in that heat, if they had to wear these, they would probably keep them unbuttoned. There are a lot of other options. You could use dusters, you could use basically any style as long as you've got some sort of a gray jacket would work, because like I said, there was a ton of variation, especially late in the war. So you can go with lots of variation, I just think the gray military jacket looks the best with this one. Now for shirts, Basically anything will do. Uh, most common colors for troops down here would be red shirts, yellow shirts, gray shirts, white shirts, or light blue shirts were pretty common. But I like, like I said, I liked sticking with the yellow. So I went with the yellow collared over shirt. I think it just looks the best. It uh, is a little bit dirty looking, but also a little rough looking. So it makes it look kind of like it's supposed to be a heavy duty shirt, which makes sense. That's what you'd want. So that's why I went with this one. I did add suspenders and I went with the red crossback suspenders, mostly just because I wanted to go for that uh, the contrast between the red and the yellow. So that's why I went with these suspenders. You could use any color. The most accurate would probably be some sort of a like this type of whitish or this kind of off-white or even a yellow one or this beige one down here are probably the most accurate ones you could use. But I just wanted to go for that contrast. So that's why I used the red. For the gun belt, I wanted to keep it simple since none of the gun belts in this game are very accurate for the period, especially for a soldier. You wouldn't see Confederate soldiers, especially really anyone at this time wearing a drop leg holster like this. That's just not something you would see. But I wanted to go with one that was pretty bare bones and basic. And so I went with the Bulger gun belt. I kept it in that light brown color. I think it looks pretty good. I didn't add a buckle to it. For the pants, I went back and forth a lot because the clerk pants, the gray clerk pants are what I ended, uh, ended up with because they matched the exact color and shade that I was looking for the best. That being said, style wise, they're not exactly perfect for it. They look a little bit cleaner than the rest of the uniform, except for the hat. I actually really like how they look. It's just that the cut of them was a little wrong but they were the only ones that had the right color and looked like they weren't just garbage. So that's why I went with the gray clerk pants. Uh, basically any gray pants would work, but these are the ones that I chose. For boots, I went with the black cavalry boots because they're probably the best example of a standard issue military footwear from any time between the 1860s and the 1890s. But if you don't want to use these, you don't like how they look, or you just don't have them, you can use basically any kind and then use the military half chaps. Uh, because that was also very common at the time. You would see people wearing a more standard issue shoe and then just having the military half chaps on top. So that works as well. I just like the cavalry boots better. And I went with the plain black ones because that was the most common color for standard issue military footwear. 
uh, around this time. So that's why I went with those. And lastly, uh, I had some spurs on in that last picture, but that's just because I was riding a horse before this. You wouldn't have spurs on an infantry soldier. There'd be something that would just make noise, get in the way, and would just be unnecessary because these guys are not riding horses, at least not in combat. It's not something they're going to be doing a lot, so they're not going to be wearing spurs. So I suggest no spurs for this outfit. But with all that in mind, that is basic, the basic picture of a Johnny Reb Confederate infantry soldier. Like I said, Navy Navy revolver for the sidearm, Springfield rifle for the primary weapon, and this outfit. Looks pretty dang good. I, at least I think so. I think it, it definitely gets the picture across. I think anybody running across you in this is definitely going to recognize what you're going for. So that's the Johnny Reb. Hope you enjoyed it if this is something you were looking for. Uh, I really enjoy making these guides. Uh, so if you have any suggestions or anything you'd really like to see recreated in Red Dead Online, Put it in the comment section. I'll give it a try. Could be anything. Could be a historically accurate thing. Could be something from a game, uh, as long as it's somewhere around this period. Or it could be from movies, TV shows, anything like that. So, uh, with all that in mind, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.